Ladies and gentlemen, your favorite dungeon dweller has arrived. Yes, my name is Pete Wall and you are watching Pillar to Post. And this is your raw report. Now, if you were expecting a huge buildup and a huge go-home show for this upcoming weekend's pay-per-view known as the Great Balls of Fire, well... Your ass was sadly mistaken, folks, because frankly, last night's Raw was worse than the name of the next pay-per-view known as Great Balls of Fire. Now, we all want to see Roman Reigns get his ass handed to him in an ambulance match. We all want to see that happen, of course. We want to see Samoa Joe mix it up with Brock Lesnar. But frankly, I really don't know, folks. Yeah, the ending wasn't too bad, too raw. Okay, I'm going to give them a little bit of credit. The cruiserweight match with Neville and uh, Mustafa Ali. Not too bad. But for the most part, the show was just killing me. Okay, here's what I did. Raw was playing. I was on my PS4 talking with my two brothers. And I was creating uh, wrestlers for this weekend's upcoming Big Dog Wrestling uh, Indie League that I've been doing here on the PS4. And uh, we do it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's what I was doing last night. Developing new characters that just signed on to join. And I have to say that is more exciting to me. And he, actually, a lot of my viewers have said the same damn thing. It is more exciting to watch Big Dog Wrestling Friday, Saturday, and Sunday than watching what WWE is puking out all over our televisions. That's sad. That's sad that a fantasy uh, event in a, in a uh, console game is getting better reviews and reactions than uh, WWE Monday Night Raw. And SmackDown. Now, I'm not going to throw NXT in that mix because I am a huge supporter of NXT. I love what they do on that show. But SmackDown and Raw need to get their shit straightened out and get their asses in gear and start producing wrestling. So, there is my, my reaction to last night's show. Completely garbage, okay? Completely garbage. You had a little uh, mix it up with uh, Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar in an interview. But when it was all getting good, what'd they do? Well, they had a whole bunch of security hold Samoa Joe back. Now, the rumors are that Lesnar wants to extend this feud all the way up into SummerSlam. I kind of hope that happens because I don't want this to be a one and done match. It shouldn't be. Samoa Joe, I think, deserves better than that. Brock Lesnar, I, you know what? I think he should lose this weekend. That guy does not deserve a universal title. I, fuck, I hate that name too. But he doesn't deserve that title. He sat for over three months on his ass while everybody else builds a storyline up or somewhat of a storyline. And this guy sits on his ass has the title collecting dust, or it's laying in his cat's litter box. Who knows? And yet, we're supposed to respect him as a champion. It's BS, folks. Complete BS. But before we get further into the show, I got to give a shout out to my sponsors, as usual. So today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at Audible Trial. Dot com backslash pillar to post. Now they have over 200,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. So what does that mean for you? You get to take this book wherever you travel. You can go for a long drive, have it playing. You can go to the gym, have it playing with your earphones on. You can go fishing, have your book read to you. Doesn't matter where you go, you always have that option. Now, here's the kicker. You can stick it out for that 30-day free trial or after you've downloaded your free audiobook, which can be of any genre of your choosing, wrestling-related, uh, fantasy fiction, science fiction, romance, you name it, they have it, uh, children's novels as well. You know, 
if you don't want to stick it out for those 30 days after you've downloaded your free audiobook you can cancel your membership and you keep the audiobook that you chose they do not take it back so that is an awesome deal on top of that every time a newcomer to this podcast a new subscriber uses that link it helps this channel out so take advantage of that link it will be in the description below make sure you use it if you haven't used it before use it because that is going to help this channel now our second sponsors they are our newest sponsors and that is grapple merch visit grapple.bigcartel.com and when using this code pillar to post 77 you receive a discount courtesy of pillar to post and grapple merch for wrestling memorabilia such as t-shirts autograph photos WWE Elite Wrestling Figures in your very own Grapple Box. This month they have Grapple Box 4. And I am going to be picking one up today. I will be ordering it today. And I will be doing an unboxing right here on Pillar to Post. So that's my sponsors. I want to thank them very much for taking me on. And, uh, you know, it is a big deal to me. If you want to check out my Teespring store, I have started a pillar to post store. There's not much in there just yet, but you can visit that and the link is in the description below as well as my Circle of Steel store. Now I have got newcomers, a lot of newcomers to the channel and they keep on asking, what is the Circle of Steel brand all about? Well, the Circle of Steel brand is all about the novel I wrote titled Dragon's Kin, book one in the Circle of Steel Chronicles. And I started developing um, merchandise to help the sales of the book as well as to support uh, me as a writer and I put a lot of hard work into it this is just one of them the circle of steel beanie is just one of many things there is t-shirts hoodies I want to come out with bandanas um, there is going to be a big dog uh, big dog wrestling merchandise uh, store open as well on Teespring but uh, right now there is pillar to post which, in the Pillar to Post store, you can find the Big Dog Wrestling t-shirt. The Circle of Steel, which has tons of designs. Um, I've got to go back in there and uh, go over things and make sure things are back live. But that's in there. I've got a Facebook merchandise page as well as my Facebook author page. Those links are in the description below. And my Facebook itself. You want to send me a friend request, connect with me. On Facebook you have that option that link is in the description now I've got a vid me channel I haven't been doing much on there just yet but that is in there there as well and if you want to support this channel all the hard work I put into this show and the shows that are related to pillar to post such as big dog wrestling and uh, the news and rumors you want to support the channel you can do that for as low as one dollar a month my Patreon link is in the description, and if you decide you want to help more than just a dollar a month, you have that option, and there are rewards for the higher you uh, you you pledge. My Twitter account is also in there. The link at pillar to post seventy seven, and finally, last but not least, my email address. If you want to send sub stories, if you want to order merchandise such as the beanie I'm wearing. It goes for $12 plus shipping and handling. And all the t-shirts I've shown on here, I will be doing a show this week because I'm getting new stock in today. Today at 3 o'clock, I pick it up actually. But you want to order that stuff, visit steeldragon1234 at hotmail.com. Send me a request, what you want, or a sub story, and I will make sure it happens. I will make sure that you have every detail you need to... Uh, purchase your merchandise or if you want to share a sub story what's a sub story well i uh, did one on one of my shows earlier la or yeah last month last month sorry about that i did one last month and i talked about an experience i had visiting a uh, a live wrestling event which was raw back in early 2000 and i shared a uh, one of my my personal stories where i've had to overcome a lot of uh, obstacles to get back to where I am now. So that's what I'm looking for for sub stories. You want to share your story. It can be about pain. It can be about wrestling. It can be about, uh, you know, um, 
and, and I don't even have to tell you your name. You know, it can be anonymous, anonymously done. But uh, you know, depression and everything. You want to, you want me to uh, read your sub story here on Pillar to Post. This dog's all too happy to do it. I, I know there's a lot of people out there that deal with a lot of stress, a lot of um, a lot of obstacles in their life that bring them down. And I found it doing this show and talking about my issues helped me a ton. I, I can't always talk to people face to face about my issues. I'm not that type of guy. So doing it like this into a camera, I found it, it uh, it's helped quite a bit. It's released a lot of that um, that aggression that I have towards the the person that uh, that took me out, basically the drunk driver that hit me. And it's helped me deal with a lot of other stuff, you know, the pain and and all the uh, all the stress I go through on a day to day basis, just because of you know depression and and all that. So. I am glad to help anyone out that wants to share their story and give advice if I can, or just simply, you know, connect with you and talk. You know, that helps a big deal. Now, as you all know, sh um, Shooting from the Hip has been cancelled. Uh, me and Red Rainer from the Heavyweight Mark channel are still good friends, and I will pump his channel out continuously here. Um, if you want to check out what he's doing, he does a lot of PC gaming um, and you can find him at Heavyweight Mark here on YouTube.com. Make sure you check him out. He's not a bad cat. We just had some, uh, you know, conflicting um, deal uh, issues to deal with, and I thought it was better that we cancel the show before a friendship was um, totally destroyed. So we're still friends. I'm still, you know, promoting his channel here every now and then when I uh, remember to. And uh, take advantage. Check him out. You guys might like the PC games he plays. Now, like I said last night, totally garbage go-home show for this weekend's pay-per-view known as Great Balls of Fire. But then, what do you expect? When you get a titled pay-per-view titled after a Jerry Lee Lewis um, song of the same name. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now I know that's probably not what uh, Vince McMahon was uh, was looking to do, because there's almost a lawsuit put because of copyright infringement. But it was all worked out. Now Jerry Lee Lewis's song is the theme song for Great Balls of Fire. But last night was Monday Night Raw. It was the seventh month, the third day of 2017. And the show opened up with Enzo Amore making his way down to ring. Now, Enzo says over the past year, he has been knocked out, attacked in hotel rooms and various other things. All of that happened while Cass had his back. For five years, Cass just watched as it happened. Cass wasn't watching his back. Cass was looking past him. Cass never had his back. What's the worst thing that Cass or Conor McGregor can do to him. Knock him out cold on pay-per-view? It happens. It happened before and it will happen again, he says. Enzo calls himself one of the toughest guys ever to step through the ropes. He went on to say he knows who he is and he will never do or be what he is not. Now, confidence is something you can't teach. More than anything else, Enzo is grateful. Enzo would push his father down a well while wishing him well before he would turn on the dark side or turn to the dark side, I should say. He knows who he is and he is going straight to the top. He has climbed out of his holes way taller than seven feet. Now, Cass is nothing more than a seven-foot catchphrase that Enzo wrote. Cass says he was is where the money is. Well, Cass shouldn't be surprised if the, the check he gets for merch sales says zero. Now, unless Cass starts wearing a shirt that says Cass Hole, Enzo drops the mic and starts to walk away. Enzo says he isn't done and comes back and essentially says the same stuff again before walking away. Now, backstage, Cass says he has never heard someone say so much and say so little. After the pay-per-view, Enzo will not be walking anywhere. Before Cass can finish, Enzo attacks him from behind 
and Adam Pierce ends up breaking up those the small brawl that broke out. So that was your start of the match, basically continuing the feud between uh, Enzo and Cass, which all came to a head last week uh, or the week before. I, either one, um, the team broke up. Big Cass, seven foot tall, turned on his little buddy uh, Enzo Amore, and now they will be heading into the pay per view for a match. Up, uh, our first match of the night was Sasha Banks and Bailey versus Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax. I don't know. You know what? I see these women matches on Raw, and it's the same thing week in and week out, week in and week out. At least we've seen four of the women, okay? At least we've seen four of the women. But it's always the same four. What about all your other women? Where's Emma? Where's, you know... All the others. Alicia Fox, you know, she's wearing a neck brace, walking um, uh, fuckface down to the ring. I can't remember his name right now. We'll call him Steve. Thank you, Super Nacho, for that. So, Bailey and Jack start the match. Jack head, Jack's head butts uh, Bailey and uh, dumps Bailey to the apron. Now, Jack grabs Bailey by the head and drops her to the mat and drags Bailey back into the ring. Now, Bailey lands a few drop kicks, but Jax tosses her into the corner. Bailey tags in Banks, double drop kicks uh, by uh, to the face, and Banks tries to leapfrog over Jax, but Jax catches her. Banks counters and drops kick drop kicks uh, Jax out of the ring. As Jax is getting back into the ring, she tosses Bailey off the apron into the barricade. Now Bailey is laid out on the barricade, and Jax runs right into her. Banks and the referee check on um, on Bailey as we cut to our first commercial of the match. Now, after the break, Banks is choking Bliss in the corner, near fall by Banks, and Banks is alone at this point. Bailey's done. Bailey seems to no longer be at ringside. She's just done. Now, Banks kicks Bliss in the head, and she misses a double knee strike into the corner. But Bliss tags in Jax, who obliterates uh, Banks with a backbreaker. And then Bliss is back in, choking Banks on the middle rope. Jax is back in. Jax picks up Banks and locks in a, uh, a, a huge bear hug. Banks tries to elbow her way out of it. Um, Jax tosses Banks all the way across the ring. And Bliss tags back in and stands on Banks' back. Now Bliss stomps on the back of Banks' head. You guys have all seen it, the repeated head, you know, stomping on the back of the head and Banks' head bouncing off the uh, the mat. Banks tries to fire up back, but uh, Bliss kicks her into the in the gut. Bliss stands on Banks' hair while pulling her arms. Uh, Bliss misses insult to injury, and Banks kicks Jax in the knee. Now, Jax falls off the apron. Banks puts Bliss in the bank statement, and it's all over. Bliss has no choice but to tap out. Sasha Banks and Bailey win, but ba Bailey continues to look weak, as always. Was it the best match you've ever seen? Absolutely not. It's the same old, same old, same old. Backstage, we get our backstage segment with Braun Strowman. He walks into Kurt Angle's office. Strowman asks, "What Angle is going to do when Roman Reigns isn't going to be at Great Balls of Fire?" Angle says he has no idea what Strowman is talking about. So Strowman says he felt Reigns' body go limp before he tossed him into the back of the ambulance. Reigns isn't here tonight and won't be there Sunday. Now Angle says Reigns will be, and Strowman says he is going to the ring tonight for competition. Angle says everyone is booked and he is sure no one wants to face Strowman this close to pay-per-view. So Strowman gets close to Angle and says Angle is a smart man. Strowman is going to the ring and he expects competition tonight. Finally, Strowman leaves the office, leaving Angle by himself. So the warning was put out. Strowman, once again looking for competition inside that ring. We all know it hasn't been coming. And the sad sack of BS that ended up facing him later on in the main event tonight just was terrible. Okay, he got a few licks in. He started looking impressive, then it all went to hell. But we'll get into that later on. 
Now we get a video package. Brock Lesnar says his goal is to be the best at everything. Joe, on the other hand, says he is going to slay the beast by breaking him down to his core. Lesnar follows and says that if you think he is supposed to be afraid of Joe because he attacked Paul Heyman, you're insane. Lesnar calls Joe a bitch. And Lesnar tells Joe that a great, at Great Balls of Fire, he is going to welcome him to Suplex City, bitch. So, a few choice words for each other, but that wasn't all they had to say. We'll get into that later in the show. We get another in-ring segment. This time, Cedric Alexander from the Cruiserweight division says he's starting to sound like a broken record. He has told Noam Dar over and over again he is done with him. This is what's going to happen. Dar is going to walk down to the ring and Alexander is going to send him back to Alicia Fox with a matching neck brace. So that was the segue into our cruiserweight match. Cedric Alexander versus Noam Dar with Alicia Fox in his corner with a neck brace around her neck. Now as soon as the bell rings, Alexander is all over Dar. Alexander hits a springboard clothesline. Dar rolls out of the ring and Alexander tries to retrieve Dar, but Fox stands in his way. Now Dar gets back into the ring and Alexander attempts his backflip head scissors, but Dar kicks Alexander square in the face. Looked like it was a bit of a, a good kick. Now Dar locks in an arm bar. Fox gets on the apron. Alexander is distracted. And Dar rolls up Alexander, but Alexander rolls through and hits the lumbar check for the win. Very short match. Cedric Alexander is your winner. So, as usual, same scenario since Cedric Alexander's come back. It's once again him and Noam Dar. You know, come on. You guys have more cruiserweights than these guys. And these are all you want to display on Monday Night Raw. And then you give them, what, two minutes, three minutes, and then it's all over. It's got to stop. So we get another in-ring segment. This time it's Miz TV. And you guys know I am sick to death of these highlight reels, these fucking Miz TVs. Um, you know, it, it's just too much. It eats up too much time when we could actually be having wrestling. Because, frankly, that's why I turn into a wrestling program, to watch wrestling. I don't mind seeing a good segment. I don't mind seeing a good promo or a good storyline. But wrestling is at the core, and we don't get that anymore. We get a whole lot of talking, and then we get a five-minute match. And then we're told to shut up, be happy, and enjoy yourself. I have to say, fuck you to WWE. So, Miz is in the ring with Maurice, Bo Dallas, who looked like a complete tard in that suit, and then the white bandana over his forehead. Like, give me a break. You look like a tard. And, of course, Curtis Axel, all dressed up nice. What has he done lately? He is the son of Kurt Henning. He is the grandson of Larry the Axe Henning. Give me a break. You guys need to start using this guy before he is too old and just can't be used anymore. You know what? Curtis Axel needs to leave WWE, hit the indies, make it big over there. Maybe, just maybe, he can come back and they'll show him proper respect for his heritage and his abilities in that ring. That's what I've got to say. Now, Miz says he's exposed the Ball family for what they are. Overexposed and overhyped. Miz says Lonzo Ball will be the biggest bust in NBA history. Ball will go on to disappoint more fans than Steve Nash did. And they are in Arizona. Now, Miz goes on and on about how LeVar Ball is a lunatic. Especially if he wants Dean Ambrose to represent the big baller brand. Now, the only thing Ambrose represents is underachievement. When Ambrose first arrived, everyone thought... He is going to be the next Roddy Piper. The truth is, Ambrose can't handle success. Anytime Ambrose was a top guy, he crumbled under the pressure. Ambrose can make all the jokes he wants, but the biggest joke of them all is Dean Ambrose. 
So Ambrose walks out onto the stage and says after the train wreck last week, he thought there would never be another Miz TV. And so was I, man. I wish that every damn week. Miz is the Intercontinental Champion at the moment. What has he done to make that so much grander than he says it is when he carries it? <coughs> Excuse me, I need a drink. Ambrose goes on to say, everything Miz said is true. Since Miz knows him so well, he must know that Ambrose doesn't care that Miz has two bodyguards. Ambrose may just come, up, come down to the ring and beat Miz's ass anyway. Ambrose says he wants his rematch for the IC title tonight. Now, as Ambrose walks down to the ramp, Heath Slater and Rhino come out. Slater says the last man to beat Miz in the ring wasn't Ambrose, it was him. Now, Slater says he has never gotten a title shot and he has been here for eight years. Slater has a family and he's got kids. Slater says it boils down to the fact that he wants this opportunity. He needs this opportunity. He has earned this opportunity for his kids. Now, Ambrose tells Slater to go to the back. Uh, let me repeat that. Tells him to go back to the, uh, the end of the line. Miz says Ambrose will get his shot when it gives when he gives it to him. Now, Miz tells Slater he isn't getting his shot, period. Kurt Angle's music hits. And as, of course, you get the chant. The you suck chant. Kurt Angle's proud of it. He knows that it's all meant for love. Now, Angle tells Miz, Miz does not get to say when and where he competes. Angle does. Now, Miz tells Angle to mind his business and go talk to Graves about his personal problems. Angle's, Angle tells Miz to watch his mouth. Miz says, or what? So, Miz says Angle can't touch him because he is raw. He is the rating spike. Miz adds that he will do Angle a favor and he will defend the title of at Great Balls of Fire. He just needs to know who it will be against. Now Angle says Miz is going to face Ambrose at the pay-per-view and defend the title against Slater right then and there. Miz, of course, livid. He is wearing a crisp and clean white 4th of July suit and he is expected to compete in it. So up next, that was the segue into the Inter Intercontinental title match. The Miz, with his, what he's calling the Miz Tourage, that is Bo Dallas and Kurt, uh, Curtis Axel and Maurice. And he's going one-on-one -on -one against Heath Slater with Rhino in his corner. And of course, Ambrose will be visiting the, co the commentator's booth. So... The match starts with Slater taking down Miz and rides his back. Now Miz counters, but Slater sends Miz over with an arm drag. Miz kicks Slater in the gut and locks in a side headlock. Now Slater sends Miz into the ropes, but Miz floors Slater with a shoulder block. Back body drop by Slater for a near fall, and Miz tries to hip toss, but Slater blocks it and backslides Miz for another near fall. Modified Cradle for another near fall by Slater and Miz surprises Slater with a kitchen sink. Now, if you don't know what that is, that is a knee to the belly. Now, Miz misses a chop, which allows Slater to land multiple strikes of his own. Slater destroys Miz with a huge inverted atomic drop. Miz rolls out of the ring to gather himself, and after a short break, Miz hits the Miz combo for a two count. Miz splits his pants in the process, and Miz and Slater trade punches. Miz kicks uh, Slater in the knee and DDTs him for another long two count. Miz grabs Slater by his legs and slingshots him into the bottom rope, and Miz dumps Slater to the outside. Now da Dallas, uh, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel try to pounce on Slater, but Rhino cuts them off. Miz grabs Slater and tosses him back into the ring, and Miz lands his it kicks also known as the Yes Kicks performed by Daniel Bryan. Now Miz misses the last kick and Slater drops him with a flapjack. Slater fires up and uh, floors Miz with a running knee. Now Miz tries Slater, or drives Slater into the corner, but Slater rolls him up. Miz kicks out. Slater hits a huge neck breaker for another near fall and Slater misses a corner strike, which allows Miz to hit the Miz clothesline. 
Miz goes up top, Slater hops to his feet and power slams Miz off the top rope. Axel gets on the apron, Rhino pulls him down, Rhino almost runs into Maurice but he stops himself. Now Dallas and Axel attack Rhino, while Slater is distracted, Miz catches him with a skull, skull crushing finale and of course he retains his title. So still, of course, because he's got a title match at the pay-per-view, Miz is still your Intercontinental Champion and the winner of that match. Now after the match, Dallas and Axel beat down Slater. Ambrose hits the ring to make the save, but the numbers game is way too much for him. Dallas and Axel drop Ambrose with a dropkick neckbreaker combo. Miz hits the skull crushing finale on Ambrose, and that is leading into your Intercontinental title match this weekend. It's been done many times already between Miz and Ambrose. It's boring, okay? This was a little bit more because there's more players involved. But in the end, it's the same thing over and over with Miz and Ambrose, okay? The storyline's stale. End it already. Make this pay-per-view the last time these two meet for a long time. So, backstage, we get a little segment with Titus O'Neil trying to convince Apollo Crews to fight Strowman tonight. Crews, showing very clearly he is has no interest in that kind of match. And Cruz tells O'Neill that he just had a kid and wants no part of Strowman. O'Neill spins a tale that convinces Cruz to accept the match. Cruz can't lose. So that segued into our next in-ring segment, and that was one of Goldust. Yes, the Golden Age has returned, people. Goldust welcomes everyone to his latest and greatest masterpiece, The Shattered Truth. Before... Uh, excuse me. Golda says uh, he has to, he has to thank the fans for this. The person he has to thank above all else is our truth. Without his selfishness, none of this would be possible. With this movie, Golda will do one. Excuse me, one thing our truth could never do: make our truth a star. Now, the only thing that shines brighter than a star is gold. Goldust tells the production crew to roll the footage. The movie is essentially just Goldust beating the crap out of R-Truth. When we cut back to the ring, R-Truth is standing behind Goldust eating popcorn. Now when Goldust realizes that R-Truth beats him down, Goldust retreats up the ramp. This is all retribution for last week when Goldust and R-Truth were supposed to have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, match. And Goldust attacked R-Truth before the bell. And basically, it was no contest because our truth could not continue. So, a little retaliation. This will probably be on the kickoff show. We all know that. Now, we get another backstage segment. This is what I'm talking about. A whole lot of talking, not a whole lot of wrestling. Angle tells Cesaro and Sheamus that they will defend the tag titles against the Hardy Boys in a 30-minute Iron Man match at Great Balls of Fire. Cesaro says he wants to fight tonight. Angle tells him that Strowman is looking for a match. Cesaro obviously says no. He wants Finn Balor. Angle obviously books the match because, you know what? It's Finn Balor. It's going to turn heads and people will watch. So up next, we've got Seth Rollins versus Kurt Hawkins. And by God, what a bullshit match that was. But before the match even began, Hawkins ran his mouth as always. Hawkins complains that he should be facing Strowman tonight. Hawkins says the fans in L.A. last week got it wrong. Hopefully, the fans in Phoenix will get it right. Hawkins asks the crowd if they think he's going to win tonight. The crowd boos. And that's when Rollins grabs the mic and asks the crowd who thinks that Hawkins needs to shut the hell up. The crowd yells yes. Rollins says me too. He decks Hawkins, the bell rings, and Rollins hits the ripcord knee for the win. Like I said, complete bullshit match, not even a full minute. They did more talking than actually did wrestling. It was two moves, you know, lands a fist and hits the ripcord knee. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's call that a night, folks. Let's get paid. After the match, Rollins... Grabs the mic again, says Bray Wyatt claims to be everywhere, but when he is looking for a fight, Wyatt is nowhere to be found. Rollins 
says Wyatt says the people need to be saved. They don't need to be saved, especially by Wyatt. Rollins goes on to say that great at Great Balls of Fire, he's going to prove that Wyatt is not a god. After the pay-per-view, only one question will remain. Is Wyatt a man or is he a coward? Strong words. Now, up next, Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar have an interview in separate rooms, making sure they cannot have any physical contact between the two. Before Michael Cole can speak, Joe cuts him off and says he is tired of answering questions. Every week he has come out here and made statements, so Joe has a few questions for his opponent. Now Joe tries to ask Heyman a question, but Lesnar tells Joe, this isn't about Heyman, this is about him and Joe. Lesnar adds he is the champ, he is going to walk into the pay-per-view champ, and he is going to leave the pay-per-view the champ. Joe gets nothing. Joe says, that's funny because he has gotten his hands on Lesnar every week and Lesnar has done nothing. Lesnar calls Joe a coward. Lesnar says, Joe is, uh, has it all wrong. Lesnar doesn't have to find Joe. Joe has to find Lesnar. So Joe says, let's do this right now. Joe says they have them separated for Lesnar's protection. Lesnar says, he gets what Joe is trying to do, and it's not going to work. Lesnar says he did the same thing when he beat The Rock and John Cena. Joe says Lesnar wants to name drop, uh, name drop, so Joe has been dropping bodies for 20 damn years. Now let me take a drink. Joe says he dropped guys like AJ Styles, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and so, so many more. Lesnar laughs and asks Heyman if this is happening right now. Joe says they are real smug and funny when they are hiding in another part of the building. Joe rips off his mic and leaves. Lesnar says he isn't going anywhere and Joe can come find him. Joe's walking with a purpose backstage and the referees and officials try to stop him. Joe is screaming for Lesnar. Angle cuts Joe off with security. Joe sees Lesnar's locker room, and Joe makes a beeline and opens the door. Instantly, the security grab him and hold him back, pulling him away from Lesnar and, and Heyman. Joe is consistently screaming and yelling for Lesnar to come out. Lesnar stands up and tells Joe he is right here. But Joe is carried away by security and uh, officials. So no physical contact this week between the two. We've gotten that for the last couple of weeks. They don't want to use it all up. Only thing I'm worried about is this going to be the usual Lesnar match. German suplex, 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 F5 pin. If it is like that, I am not going to want to see these guys fight again. And we get our second Cruiserweight match of the evening. And it's Neville versus Mustafa Ali. Now, although it was a short match, it wasn't a bad match. Mustafa Ali was showing he's got talent tonight. And some of the stuff he did with um, with Neville, Neville sold awesomely. That one DDT in the match, man, it looks so sick. And Neville contorted his whole body just to show the fans how sick that, that DDT actually was. So at the very beginning of the match, it is hold for hold. Neither can get an advantage. Ali surprises Neville with a drop kick. Now Ali walks the ropes and hits a flying crossbody for a near fall. And Ali locks in a front chancery. Now Ali follows that up, kicking Neville in the face and mounts the top rope for the inverted 450 splash. Neville cuts him off and tries to, a, uh, to back suplex Ali off the top rope. Ali, however, backflips and lands on his feet. Ali hits a tilt the world DDT for another long two count. Yes, the counts were long. Ali goes up top again, but Neville pushes Ali off the top rope. He lands face first against the barricade, and Neville drags Ali back into the ring and stomps a mud hole into the some bitch. Now Neville stomps Ali all over the ring, and Neville whips Ali in uh, into the ropes and tosses him high into the air in a for a flapjack. Just lets him face plant. It was nicely done. Ali kicks Neville in the head. And Ali attempts his rolling neck breaker, but uh, Neville decapitates him with a Texas-sized lariat 
that turns Ali inside out. Neville locks in the ring, uh, rings of Saturn, and that is all it. Ali taps out. Your winner, the cruiserweight champion, the king of the cruiserweights, Neville. So we go for another segment. This time we're in the desert somewhere, folks. Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt walking the desert. You see cactus all over the, the place. You see uh, tumbleweeds. You see dead plants. You know, it's the desert. He's walking around, enjoying the sunlight, the sunshine. And Bray Wyatt says that men, or that when men first started worshipping the sun, it was to show gratitude. Wyatt says he gave mankind the gift of fire. The world isn't made up of black and white. Wyatt is the chaos that fuels the fire. Since he has come to Raw, best friends have become enemies, and the beast has been reduced to a mere mortal gasping for air. Why? Because he is Bray Wyatt, and he is everywhere. This Sunday, Rollins will look into the eyes of God. Rollins will not go blind. For the first time, Rollins will be able to see, and it will burn. Now, that was the end of that segment, and then we go into another one. I, I always like Bray Wyatt's um, promos. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's just they are handling him all wrong on Raw. Okay, we started seeing him succeed in, in SmackDown. And now he's been reduced to a jobber once again. But we move backstage. This time Charlie asks Bliss, and that is Alexa Bliss for those that don't know, if she is worried that what happened tonight was the foreshadowing of what will happen this Sunday. Alexa Bliss says she isn't worried about losing to Banks earlier tonight. Bliss says she let Banks win to give her a false sense of security. It's all about strategy. Charlie tells Bliss that no one believes that Bliss let Banks win tonight. Bliss says no one cares what Charlie thinks. That is why Bliss is holding the Raw Women's title and Charlie is just holding a microphone. And that would lead us into the Finn Balor versus Cesaro with Sheamus in the ring and at his corner. And this would break down into an all-out brawl between Finn Balor, Cesaro, Sheamus, the Drifter, um, Samson, and, or, yeah, Samson and the Hardy Boys. Now, I didn't mind that all. Uh, the match is pretty good. Uh, it, it's just, it was a little too late in the show. Okay, you guys already put me half to sleep with the, all the talking, all the boring crap, all the fast-paced matches that didn't mean a damn thing going into this pay-per-view. And I'm supposed to be interested now near the end of the show. Makes a lot of sense. So before the match starts, the Hardy Boys come out to the commentary booth. Balor grabs a side headlock and Cesaro whips Balor into the ropes. But Balor drop kicks Cesaro in the knee. Now Balor tries to uh, tries a leapfrog, but Cesaro catches him in midair and hits a backbreaker. Cesaro and Balor trade strikes, but Cesaro floors Balor with a clothesline. Now Cesaro goes for a sunset flip, but Balor rolls through, drop kicks Cesaro in the face, and Balor lands multiple chops in each corner. Balor stomps Cesaro out. Sheamus gets up on the apron and distracts Balor. Now Cesaro trips Balor into their corner and Cesaro chops away at Balor. Balor spins Cesaro around and lands a few chops of his own. Cesaro and Balor trade chops and European uppercuts. Uh, Cesaro tosses Balor to the outside ring area. Now after a short break, the Cesaro deadlift, uh, we get the deadlift gut wrench suplex and uh, he goes for a uh, pinfall and only gets a two. Cesaro locks in a top wrist lock. Balor fights to his feet and tries to splash Cesaro, but Cesaro catches him and vertical suplexes Balor down to the mat. We get a basement European uppercut by Cesaro, and Cesaro calls for the neutralizer, but Balor's, Balor double legs Cesaro and hits a double foot stomp. Balor fires up, and Cesaro rolls to the outside. Now, baseball slide by Balor. Balor hits the PK, that is the... Um, penalty kick on the apron and Balor rolls Cesaro back into the ring. Sling blade by Balor. Balor calls for the torpedo drop kick 
and Elias Sampson walks down to the, the ramp to ringside, and while Balor is distracted, Cesaro hits the Swiss death uppercut. Cesaro uh, sits on the top rope for Balor, but Balor lands a leaping enziguri that sends Cesaro careening to the floor. Now, Balor tries to hit the rope, but Samson trips him. The Hardy Boys run down to ringside and attack Samson and Sheamus, and Balor backbody drops Cesaro to the outside. Balor hits a tope con hilo onto everyone as they're battling out at ringside, and Cesaro picks up Balor, drops him onto the apron. Matt Hardy hits the twist of fate on Samson. Sheamus bro kicks Matt. Jeff Hardy dives onto Sheamus. Cesaro hits Jeff with a running European uppercut, and Cesaro turns around, and Balor torpedo drop kicks him into the barricade. Balor throws Cesaro back into the ring and hits a coup de gras for the win. And your winner, Finn Balor. A good win, not a bad match. It was actually a pretty good match. There was a lot going on. It was fueling the rivalry between the Hardy Boys and who I like to call now The Bar. As they say, they are, uh, they are, uh, they don't set the bar, they are the bar. That is Cesaro and Sheamus. Um, so that leads into our, our title, tag title match this weekend for the Great Balls of Fire pay per view. And probably something is going to happen now between Finn Balor and Elias Sampson. Is that going to be a kickoff match or is it going to be on the card at all? Or are we going to see something next week? Who knows? After the match, an ambulance backs into the arena. Braun Strowman power walks down to the ramp to ringside. Now, Strowman says there are few things in this world that he likes more than hurting Roman Reigns. Strowman says Reigns uh, is like, uh, says Reigns is too stubborn to stay down. Now, last week, Strowman almost put Reigns through the ambulance. If Reigns is stupid enough to show up, he is going to leave the same way he did last week, in the back of the ambulance. Lo and behold, Titus O'Neil comes out onto the stage, flapping his gums as usual. Strowman is a big man, or, yeah, comes out and says, Strowman is a big man with a big plan. You know what they say, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Now O'Neill says he would come to the ring and slap Strowman, but it isn't going to. Uh, he isn't going to do that. Now O'Neill intros uh, Apollo Cruz. Cruz comes out and gets into the ring with Strowman, and you know what's going to happen. But Apollo Cruz did show a little spark. Okay, I'm not going to take anything away, but we knew this was a futile match for him. Now Strowman tries to attack Cruz, but Cruz ducks and lands a few strikes. Strowman tosses Cruz into the corner. Cruz moves out of the way and grabs a side headlock. Now Strowman kicks Cruz in the face. Strowman tosses Cruz out of the ring and yells that Cruz isn't competition. Get out of my damn ring. Cruz slowly rolls back into the ring. Strowman locks in a trapezius claw. And Cruz tries to fire up, but Strowman tosses Cruz out of the ring once again. Now, O'Neill gets in Cruz's face this time and tells him to get back in the ring and fight. Cruz stuns Strowman on the ropes um, with a hot shot, and Strowman grabs Cruz by the throat, but Cruz kicks Strowman in the head. Cruz hits another leaping enziguri. Strowman drops to a knee, and Cruz hits Strowman, or kicks Strowman in the head, and Strowman finally hits the mat. Now, Cruz sets up a standing moonsault, but Strowman kicks Cruz mid-flip. Look fantastic. I've never seen it done. He's doing a standing moonsault to the uh, prone Braun Strowman. And as he flips, Strowman kicks him in the side, sends him across the ring. And he landed very precariously, uh, Cruz did. Kind of on his neck. The referee ran straight for him to check on him. Even Titus O'Neil. Uh, thankfully, no injury occurred. Now, Cruz sets up a... Uh, I already did this. Cruz is uh, sent sailing across the ring. Strowman hits the running power slam. Uh, goes for a pin, but Strowman picks Cruz up off the mat before the three count can be made. Does this three separate occasions. Finally, and mercifully, 
He ends it with a last power slam and a pinfall. Your winner, Braun Strowman, of course. But after the match, Strowman picks up Cruz for another slam, but O'Neal pulls Cruz off Strowman's shoulder. O'Neal gets in the ring and gets in Strowman's face. O'Neal decks Strowman. Strowman clotheslines O'Neal out of the, his boots and running power slam by Strowman. Strowman drags Cruz over to the ambulance and tosses him into the back of it. Now, Strowman keeps trying to tell the driver to drive away, but the ambulance isn't moving. Strowman goes to the driver's side of the ambulance. The door opens, and it's Roman Reigns. <coughs> and if you didn't expect that, you got to be kidding me, please. Now, Strowman and Reigns battle up the ramp. Reigns pushes Strowman through the LED board. Reigns spears Strowman off the stage through the table. Now, Reigns celebrates back up on the stage, and Strowman miraculously gets back to his feet, and Reigns just does nothing but look on in amazement. That was how Raw ended. That was your Raw show. If you enjoyed it, good for you. I enjoyed the ending. I enjoyed the tag team match, and I enjoyed Neville and Mustafa Ali. The rest of the show, complete garbage. A whole lot of talking. A whole lot of talky talky, you know? That's not wrestling. You want to see wrestling? You tune in Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you watch Big Dog Wrestling here on Pillar to Post, and I guarantee you, you're going to see wrestling, a little bit of talking, and a good amount of entertainment and fun. You're not going to catch that on Raw, people. Not going to happen. This is Pillar to Post, as always. Pete Wall, you guys have a good day, and I will be back after SmackDown tonight for your SmackDown report. Stay tuned. We've got a lot of things coming your way here on Pillar to Post. Have a good day, everyone.